Marat, it's at the Mishnah actually, the bottom of Ayin Vav Omid Beis. Zok the Mishnah. Chamisha Dvarim Bayin Betume. There are five Karbonis that are Karbonis Tzibur that can be brought even if the Yidin are Tomei. So this is uh, based on the halacha that we find by Karbon Pesach, that because Karbon Pesach is a Karbon Tzibur, therefore it can be brought even if the Yidin are Tomei. So that's not only regarding the Karbon Pesach. This is true about any Karbon Tzibur that can be brought Betume. Now what this mission is saying over here is that there are other five Karbanas Tzibur that are also brought betume. However, the Einon Nechalen betume. The carbon of the Beis HaMikdash on the Mizbeach could be brought betume, but you can't eat it when you're tummy. Ha'oymer, one of these five is the carbon Oymer, which is brought on the second day of Pesach. Shtei Alechem, which is brought on Shavuos, the two breads that were brought on Shavuos. Lechem Aponim, which is brought every Shabbos. Zivchei Shalmei Tzibur. There are two karbonis shlamim. These are, this is the only example of a of a shlamim, which is a carbon sibur, which is brought also on shvuis. And there's a carbon that's brought under on, from a sire, from a goat that's brought under shchaydesh. These are all karbonis sibur, and they all can be brought while you're tame, but you cannot eat them. But however, hapesach shabbatome. When it comes to the carbon pesach, which could also be brought when you're tame. Nechal betume. Not only could it be brought, could it could you sprinkle the blood and shecht it and bring it on the mizbeach betume, but you could eat it with while you're tame as well. How do we know this? Shaloi ba mitchilasai el alachila, because the whole point of the carbon pesach is for eating it. Rashi here brings the pasuk that it says by carbon pesach lefi achlay. The point is to eat it. So if the Torah says that carbon pesach is doichet tume. It must be that it's doichet the tumah, not only for bringing the carbon in the Beis Hamikdash, but also for eating it. That's the main por- point of the carbon. Whereas these other karbanis, they're doichet the tumah, for bringing the carbon, but not for eating it. Dr. Gemara Cha Misha, the Mishnah says that there are these five karbanis. Why does it give a number? Whenever the Mishnah gives a number, it comes to exclude something. Otherwise, there's no point of a number. You can count it yourself. Lamute mai. What is this coming to exclude? It's coming to exclude the carbon chagige that's brought on Yontif. On Yontif Pesach, or Yontif Shvuis, or Yontif Sukkis. There's a carbon chagige that you have to bring on Yontif. Now, that's actually a carbon that every individual has to bring, but Rashi says, because all Yidin have to bring it at the same time, it's what's called Bob Bechnufya, all the masses, all Yidin have to bring it at the same time, so it's similar to our carbon tzibur. So Salke Daito Chamina, I would think to say, Kivin, the carbon sibur, who it's considered to be to some extent a carbon sibur, or kviyale mayit, and it has a set time when it has to be brought on Yantiv. So titchi tumah. So therefore it should push off tumah, you should be allowed to bring it. If most of you did not tell me, you should be allowed to bring it. Kamash Malan, therefore, the Mishnah here said there's only five to exclude this case. Even this late Tashlum and Kol Shiva, since you have the option of bringing it any of the seven days of Yontif, or even by Shavuos, you can bring it after Yontif for seven days, so you don't have to bring it on one specific day. So like Dachia Shabbos, so then we know it doesn't push off Shabbos because it doesn't have to be brought on Shabbos. You have another six days to bring it. The Shabbos like so since it doesn't push off Shabbos, so like Tumah, it also doesn't push off Tumah, and you have to bring it on the other days, not while you're Tommy. That's what the Mishnah came to exclude. Frek, the Gemara, what did we say in the Mishnah? There are only five of these Karbanis that can push off Tomah. But the Nisni Nami, Si'ire, Haragalim. Just like there are the Si'irim that are brought as a carbon Musaf on a and that pushes off Tomah, why don't we talk about the Si'irim that are brought on Yantif? It's part of the carbon Musaf, they're also brought specially on Yantif, and they also push off Tomah. Why isn't that mentioned in the Mishnah as a sixth carbon? Says the Gemara, it's not necessary. It's understood already from the other thing that's mentioned here. It mentions that the carbon shlamim that's brought on shvuis, also extra carbon musaf that's brought on shvuis, the shalmei tzibur, that that is brought even with Tumah. So therefore it's not necessary to mention the carbon of seirim that are part of the carbonus musaf that are brought on yante because it's understood it's similar to the shalmei tzibur. Says the Gemara, if that's the reason why it doesn't mention the seirim, of Yantif, because it's similar to the Shalmei Tzibor, Ihachi Si'irei Rashi Chadashim Namilei Nisni. So why does the Mishnah mention that the special Karbanas of Rishchidosh are Deichi, are Deichi Tomeh? It also should be self-understood, or it's similar to the Zivchei Shalmei Tzibor. <coughs> so Namilei Nisni, it shouldn't mention it as well, the Ha'atana Zivchei Shalmei Tzibor, because it says the Shalmei Tzibor. 
That's the Gemara. Omri, they said, the answer is as follows. No, it is necessary to mention the Karbonis of Rishchaydish that it's Doiche Tome. Why? I would think to say, in the Taita, when it talks about the carbon of Rishchaydish, it doesn't mention the expression of the word Mayid, that it has a set time. So maybe it's not Doiche Tome. Maybe only Doiche Tome when it says the word Mayid, that it's a set time when it has to be brought, and therefore it's Doiche Tome. By Rishchaydish, it doesn't say in the Pasuk Mayid. Kamash Malan, so therefore the Mishnah is teaching me, the Rishchaydish Ikri Mayid. Rishchaydish is referred to as Mayid, and therefore the carbon of Rishchaydish does Toshof Tome. Kedabaya, as Abaya said, that we find, not in Chumash, but we find in Eicha, that it refers to Rishchaydish as a Mayid. Domer Abaya, Tamos the High Shata. The Tamas of this year, this is referring to the year that the Yidin were in the Midbar, and they sent the Meraglim. So we know when did the Gzeir of the Meraglim take place, when did the Yidin cry that they don't want to enter into Eretz Yisrael? It was on Tisha B'av. When did they send the Meraglim? On Rishchidosh Tamas. So from Rishchidosh Tamas to Tisha B'av is only 39 days, but the Meraglim really went 40 days. So therefore Abayah said that Tamas, the Haishate Meluye Malye. There was 30 days of Rishchidosh Tamas, it wasn't 29 days, it was 30 days. So therefore, it comes out that the 40th day was in Tisha B'av. The Chsev, the Pasuk says, Kara Alai Mayid, the Ebeshta established the set time, which refers to this extra day of Rishchidosh, that there was two days of Rishchidosh, because there was 30 days of, of the Tamuz. Lishbar Bachurai, to break the young ones, which means that the Ebeshta set up that Rishchidosh should be two days, in order that the Gzeda will end up being on Tisha B'av. So what do we see in this Pasuk? That we refer to Rishchidosh Tamuz as Mayid, as a set time that David Shtay established. So this refers also to every Rishchidish, that every Rishchidish is called Mayid, and therefore the carbon of Rishchidish pushes off Toma. So now, what do we understand from this? That whenever we say that a carbon pushes off Toma, what's the reason? Because it says Mayid. Mayid, it's a set time, and therefore it pushes off Toma. So should we say, the Kulumi Mayid also, that all of these carbonas that we mentioned in our Mishnah, where do we learn out that it pushes off Yant, it pushes off Toma, that is, because it says Mayid. So Minon and Mili, where do we see in the title that it says Mayid regarding all of these carbonas? Tan Rabbana, we learned in the Braisa. When in the Parsha of Karbanis, which is in Parsha's Emir, the title says, Vayadabe Maisha, Es Mayid de Hashem. That Maisha spoke to the Yidin, the Mayid de Hashem. After all the Karbanis of the, or not really Karbanis, <coughs> after the, all the Yomim Taiban, and it mentions some Karbanis there as well in, in Parshas Emoy, it concludes with this Pasik, Maya de Hashem. So, what is Maya de Hashem there referring to? So, the Braith explains, Ma Talmud Loima. Why does it say this Pasik? I only see by the carbon Tomid and the carbon Pesach that the Taita writes Mayat. Shanema Bahu, Bemaya Doi, Bemaya Doi. It says by both of them, Bemaya Doi. And we learn out, a Philip Shabbos. That Bemayad means a fill of Shabbos. Again, the way you read it is, it says Bemayad. So I say Bemayad of a fill of Shabbos. That you bring it even in Shabbos. And Bemayad of a fill of Tome. To tell me that you bring it even in Tome. So you compare Tome and Pesach because it says by both of them Bemayad. Shar Karbonis Tzibur, Minayim. Where do I see all the other Karbonis Tzibur that they're Deiche Tome? Where do I see that it says the term Bemayad by them? Shanamar, because the Pasik says in Parshas Pinchas, that's where most of the Karbanis Tzibur are. Parshas Pinchas, all the Musafim, so it says there, Eile, Tasu, Lashem, Bemoy, Ad, Deichem. These are the ones that you should bring in their time. So I see the term Mayed used by all Karbanis Tzibur. But there are two Karbanis Tzibur that are not mentioned there. The Shtei Alechem and the Oimer are not brought in Parshas Pinchas, where it says Bemoy, Ad, Deichem. That's actually brought in Parshas Emer, where it says Vayadabar, Moishas, Moy, Ad, Hashem. So Minayin Larabis Oimer Vahakare Vimoy, the carbon Oimer, and also there's a carbon that brought, that's brought with the carbon Oimer. And Shte Alechem, the two breads, Vahakare Vimom, and the Kvasim, there are lambs that were brought together with the carbon with the Shte Alechem. How do I know where do I see the term Bemoyadai regarding them? Tamud Laimar, it says in Parshas Emoy, by Dabba Mesha Smaya de Hashem of Bene Israel. And there it talks about the carbon Oimer and the Shte Alechem. And the Tayyar uses the term Maya de Hashem. The Teir is giving you a set time for these Karbanas that they have to be brought just like the other Karbanas Sibur. So I see that by all the Karbanas Sibur, it uses the term to say that it has to be brought in a set time and therefore it's Daichet Tome. 
Frak the Gemara, Vachal Hani Lamali. Why do I need a Taira to teach me by all Karbanas Sibur to write the term Bamaya to say that it pushes off Tumah? Why can't it say the rule one time by one of the Karbanas Sibur that it pushes off the Tumah and I'll compare all other Karbanas Sibur to it? And says the Gemara at Sirichi, I need it to say by all these cases. If the Taira would only write regarding the carbon Tumid Bamaya that it pushes off Tumah, have a minute Tumid. Tumid is different. Shekane. Tadir, it's something that's brought constantly, every day. The kalil, and it's a carbon oil. It's totally burnt in the Mizbeach, so it's a very uh, high level of a carbon. That's why it pushes off Tumah. Avo Pesach loy. Pesach is not brought every day, and it's not burnt in the Mizbeach, so maybe it doesn't push off Tumah. Kamash Mulan, that's why it says regarding the carbon Pesach as well, Mayit, that it can be brought to Tumah. Because of Rahman Pesach, if the Taylor would only write the Lashon of Mayit by Pesach, I would say maybe Pesach is on a higher level. Pesach, Shuhu Anish Kares. If you don't bring a carbon Pesach, there's a punishment of Kares. That's why it can be brought even if you're Tommy. I will Tomit, the Ain Anish Kares. If you don't bring the carbon Tommy, there is no Anish of Kares. Ain Maloi. Maybe it does not push off the Tommy. Kamash Malon, that's why it has to say Mayid both by Pesach and by Tommy. Now, if the Taylor would only write the term of Mayid, by these two, Havamin, I would say, Hani, Hu, Yashbehen, Sad Chomer. These two, they have a tzad chomer. I see there's something unique, something very stringent about them, which is tamid, tad the kolol. Tamid is brought constantly every day, and it's totally burnt in the mizbeach. And Pesach shu'anish kodes. And Pesach has an anish of kodes. Avoshar karbanis sibor, all the other karbanis sibor, aim the light. They doesn't have any of these stringencies, so maybe they do not push off tomah. So therefore, because of Rachmana, Eilu Tas al Hashem b'Mayadecha. So the Torah says in Parshas Pinchas regarding all other Karbanas Sibur, Mayadechem that is brought even b'Tuma. The E because of Rachmana, Eilu Tas al Hashem b'Mayadecha. If the Torah would tell me that all these Karbanas Sibur are Deicha Tuma, so then Hava Min I would say Shar Karbanas Sibur, all those Karbanas Sibur that are mentioned in Parshas Pinchas, Habo and Lachaper, they are brought as a kapare. They're Karbanas Chatos. They're brought. As a kapare, so therefore that kapare is a very important thing. So therefore it's daichetume. Avo oimer ushtei alechem. When it comes to the oimer and ushtei alechem, the aim born lechaper. They're not brought as a kapare. Elo lahate baalmenin. Why are they brought? The oimer is mater the chadosh, the new the new tfua for that year. That's what the oimer comes to be mater. And the ushtei alechem is also coming to be mater the new tfua. Comes to be mater the new tfua in the base of mikdash. So maybe the Oymer and the Shtei Alechem, they're not brought as a kapara, they're brought just to be matter, to eat the new tzvue. So light, may, so light, maybe I would say that it doesn't push off tum. It's not so important as something which is brought as a kapara. Kamash Malan, therefore the Torah says, the, the term b'mayadai or mayadai Hashem, even regarding the Oymer and Shtei Alechem. But now the Gemara says that you can say a reverse idea as well. V'yikasav Rachmane, Oymer Shtei Alechem. If the Torah would only write that Oymer Shtei Alechem, is b'mayaday that it can be brought b'tumah l'chudayu? If we would say only them alone, hava mina adarabe. Maybe there's a, I would say it to the contrary. Oymesh de alechem the alimi oymesh de alechem that are very important. Why the boy and lahat? That they're, they're necessary. They have to be matted the new wheat to be able to eat the new wheat. So maybe they're more necessary, even more than a kapara. A kapara, you maybe you can wait until you're not going to be tummy anymore. But the hetter, maybe that's more important. Avahana, Floy, the other ones I would say it's, it can't be brought while you're Tomei. Kamash Malon, therefore the Taita had to write the Mayadai by all of these in order to tell me that it has to be brought, that it could be brought, that is, even when you're Tomei. The Gemara never uh, uh, explains though, maybe the Taita should have written the Mayadai by two of them, and that would be good enough. The Gemara is explaining why it can't write the Mayadai by one of them, by Tomei, by Pesach, because each one has a unique stringency or a unique thing that's not similar to anyone else. But why the Taita couldn't just write two of them and learn out from them, that the Gemara doesn't explain. Taisvah says that there must be an explanation for it, but the Gemara doesn't go ahead and explain it. Absolutely. So the Gemara, no, those two the Gemara explained that they're a matter. So there's a, there's a, it comes to be matter, so there's a Svara that you can learn out from there. But you can, you can mix up other two and say them. The Gemara never explains that. Pesach and Shtei Alechem, for example. Yeah, the Gemara never explains that. Okay, now we go into another section of the Gemara here that's going to discuss this whole idea that the carbon is Deiche Tome. Now, this is a famous sugya which discusses this idea when we say that a carbon is Deiche the Tome, carbon Tzibur is Deiche Tome. Is that carbon Hutra, Tome Hutra Betzibur? That even though you're Tome, it's completely, totally permitted to bring the carbon while you're Tome. You don't have to make any effort 
to be metar yourself to bring it. Or tuma hutcha betzibur. It's only pushed off. If you have no other option and there's no choice, so with difficulty, we push off the tuma and we allow you to bring the carbon while you're tummy. But if you can do something to be metar yourself, you should. That's a famous machlaikis, and here the, the Gemara is going to discuss this and apply it to our Mishnah together with some other things to see what's the pshat in our Mishnah that it said that we could bring these karbanas tzibur even while you're tummy. Now, Sav Rua, the people in the yeshiva, so they thought the following. Dulakula <coughs> Alma, that everybody holds tuma tchuya hi b'tzibur. The tuma, when we say that a carbon could be brought even while you're tummy, a carbon tzibur that is, it's only pushed off. It's not totally mutter. You still should make an effort to see to bring it while you're um, tohir. You have to have a special push, push it off, but it's pushed off, not totally mutter. And therefore, uboi tzitz leratzais. You have to have the tzitz to be meratza, to uh, allow you to bring this carbon. In other words, if you're going to say that the tum is hutra betzibur, so then the tzitz. We had this a few times in the Gemara. This is one of the things that the tzitz accomplished in the Beis Hamikdash is, in some in some areas, not always, but for some halachas of tumah, some uh, occurrences of tumah in the Beis Hamikdash, the tzitz was effective to make the the carbon kosher. So when you say that uh, you can bring a carbon tzibur even while you tome, if you're gonna say tumah hotra betzibur, you don't need the tzitz to allow you to bring that carbon. It's just totally mutter. But if you're going to say tuma duchuya so then the reason why you're allowed to bring the carbon even while you tome is, is as an effect of the tzitz. The tzitz is what's affecting and allowing you to bring that carbon even while you tome. And the Gemara explains the leka tana tashamatle. We don't find a tana that holds tuma hutra betzibur that when you tome, it's totally mutter to bring a carbon tzibur. Ella Rabbi Yehuda. There's only Rabbi Yehuda that holds this, but besides Rabbi Yehuda, nobody else agrees to this. The Tanya will learn in the as follows, tzitz ben shayesh na'al mitzchai. So Rab Shimon says that tzitz, whether it's on the forehead of the kain gadol, ben she'en na'al mitzchai, whether he's not wearing it on his forehead, meratzah. It's mechaper, it, it makes it possible, it allows you to bring a carbon even while you're tummy. That's Tibri Rab Shimon. Rab Yehuda Aim and Rab Yehuda says, oideyu al mitzchai, if the tzitz is on his forehead, meratzah. So then it's meratzah, it, it's, it helps to be able to bring the carbon. But if it's not on his forehead, then you, the, the tzitz does not have its effect. So Amalei Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon says, I'll bring you a raya, that the tzitz has its effect, even if it's not on the forehead of the Kayin Gadol. So because Kayin Gadol b'yem ha'kippurim yechiyach, the Kayin Gadol that does is avayde on Yom Kippur, she'ein ha'yom mitzchai, and part of the avayde that he does is with the white begodim, the big day lovon, and he does not have the tzitz, which is gold, on his forehead. And even then, if there would be tume, the tume would be able to you he would be able to bring the carbonus, just like any other carbon sibur, including of Yom Kippur, you could also bring while you're tume. And we see that you could bring those carbonus even on Yom Kippur when the Kayan does not have the tzitz on his forehead. So I see that it's Meratzi even when it's not. Amaloi, Rabbi Yehuda says, don't bring a rai from Yom Kippur. Hanach Kippurim, leave the example you're bringing me from Yom Kippur. Shetuma hutra betzibur. In that case, because it's a carbon sibur, you don't need the tzitz to be meratzah to be able to bring a carbon sibur while you're tummy. It's if it's a carbon sibur, so you, it's totally mutter. You can bring it even without the effect of the tzitz. That's what Rabbi Yehuda said. So now Meklal, from the fact that Rabbi Yehuda is the one that argued in this, I see that Rabbi Shimon Sava. What's Rabbi Shimon's opinion? Tuma duchoyehi betzibur. The tuma is only pushed off, and you do need the effect of the tzitz to be allowed to bring a carbon sibur while you're tummy. Okay, but the Gemara actually said that it's not only a machlokes between Rab Shimon and Rab Yehuda. We accept Rab Shimon's opinion to be the opinion of the majority of Kula Alma, as the Gemara said. Taisus here points out the reason the Gemara says this is because we find in other places Rab Yaisi, other Tanaim agree to Rab Shimon. So it's only Rab Yehuda that holds tuma, that, that, that the tuma that is is hutra betzibur. That's one point. Okay, keep that in mind. Now the Gemara brings another point. With the Kula Alma, and everybody also agrees, Ein Hatzitz Meratze Alachilois. The effect of the Tzitz is not regarding the meat of the carbon, not regarding the basa. The carbon has different parts. There's basically three parts of the carbon. There is the basa that's eaten, 
There's the basar or the chalavim, the parts that are burnt in the mizbeach, and there's the blood that you sprinkle on the mizbeach. So any of these three could have begotten tomei. So everybody agrees that when we say that the tzitz has an effect for something that got tomei, regarding what does it have an effect? Regarding the, the, uh, the blood that became tomei, not regarding the basar of the carbon that became tomei. And the Gemara brings the b'raisa for this. That everybody agrees to this. The kula almein atzitz meratza al achilles, the leke, shatana, the shametle, the omer atzitz meratza al achilles. There's no tana that says that the effect of the tzitz is even if the basar became tomei, el rabliyeze. Oh, besides one tana, which is rabliyeze. The tanya we learned from the b'raisa, rabliyeze, the omer, rabliyeze says, atzitz meratza al achilles, the effect of the tzitz is also on the meat of the carbon. Rabliyeze, omer, rabliyeze says, ein atzitz meratza al achilles. The tzitz has no effect regarding the basar of the carbon. Okay, so that's point number two. So point number one is tumah is only tchuya b'tzibur. You need the effect of the tzitz to be able to bring a carbon tzibur. Point number two is the effect of the tzitz is only regarding the blood of the carbon, not regarding the meat of the carbon. So now, based on this, the Gemara says, Neime masnisin the like Rabbi Shua. So our mission that we said, that the carbonist tzibur are pushed off, they, they push off tumah, that is, so this l'chayda will come out not like the opinion of Rabbi Shua. And here the Gemara is going to bring the opinion of Rabbi Shua. He argues with Rabbi Yeza, and it's a little bit of a lengthy thing that's uh, down the Amud. And then it's going to come back to explain why our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Shua. But first let's see what's Rabbi Shua's opinion. The Tanya will learn Rabbi said, Rabbi Shua said as follows, Ba'asisa o'ilisecha ha'basava adam. You bring your carbon oila, and there's the meat, and there's the blood. The Pasuk says both together, Basar and Dam. So Rabbi Shua, Oimer, Rabbi Shua says what this teaches me is, Im ein Dam, ein Basar. If you have no blood to sprinkle on the Mizbeach, you can't eat the Basar, you can't bring any of the Basar <coughs> on the Mizbeach. If the blood became Tomei, that is, or the blood got lost, so then the other part of the carbon can't be done as well. And the same thing in the reverse as well, Im ein Basar, if you have no Basar to eat because it became Tomei or whatever it is, then ein Dam. Then you can't sprinkle the blood on the Mizbeach as well. In order to be able to sprinkle the blood, you have to have the basar that it should be tohayr to be able to eat. Rabbi Yezah says, no, dam, you could sprinkle the blood on the Mizbeach, afapisheim basar. Even if the basar is not available, it's not here, or it became tomei, you can still sprinkle the blood on the Mizbeach. Because at the end of that pasuk it says, v'dam zvachecho yishofech. You pour the blood on the Mizbeach, Meaning, even if you don't have the basar, even if the basar became tome. So now, the Gemara asks, Umani mekayim v'asisa o'ilesecha basar v'adam. According to Rabbi Yezah, why does the Pasuk say that you make it, you do the carbon oila and you have to have both the basar and the dam? Le'emolecha, that's teaching you something else. Ma dam bezirike, just like the blood is thrown, it's sprinkled on the mizbeach, it's not placed on the mizbeach, it's thrown on the mizbeach, when the Kainim put the Basa, when they brought the Basa onto the Mizbeach to burn it on the top of the Mizbeach, how was it done? They threw it onto the Mizbeach. And have a Yaymer, and you, you say as follows Lul cotton. There was a small little uh, break. Yesh, Ben Kevish Le Mizbeach, between the ramp and the Mizbeach, there was this small separation, and then and the Kainim would stand over there and he would throw it onto the Mizbeach. Okay. So now Tosfos holds that he didn't really need that separation, but that separation was there as a reminder to the Kayin that don't walk all the way onto the Mizbech and place it down. It, 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 you can stand right here and throw it, similar to sprinkling the blood. Okay, so that's what you learn out from the fact that the Tater says Basar and Dam, regarding the fact that the Basar is also thrown on the Mizbech. Now the Gemara will explain the, these two psukim, the psukim according to Rabbi Yezer and according to Rabbi Shua. So basically, the machlaikis between Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Shua is, what happens if the basar became Tomei? Could you still sprinkle the blood on the Mizbeach? <laughs> so now Rabbi Shua, Nami, according to Rabbi Shua, Hoksiv, the Pasik does say, the dams shapich. You can pour the blood on the Mizbeach, which would sound like even if the basar is not there. So what does he say with that? Amalak, Rabbi Shua answers you, Haksiv Gabay. Right there it says in the Pasik, Viha Basar Teichal. You have the Pasik here quoted. Dams of Achachi Yeshafach al Mizbach Hashem Alekach. Viha Basar Teichal. So even over there it says Dam and Basar together. So how could you learn out from there that you sprinkle the blood even if there's no Basar? So now the Gemara asks, if so, Vahani Tre Kroy Lomali. So why does the Torah have to say twice the idea that you have to have both the, the basar and the dam together in order to be able to sprinkle the dam? 
Says the Gemara, and the answer is Chad va'ayla. One pasuk is telling me this halacha regarding the carbon ayla, v'chad b'shlamim. Another pasuk is telling me this halacha regarding the carbon shlamim. With sricha, and it has to be mentioned by both of them. Because of Rachmana ba'ayla, if we would only say this requirement regarding the ayla, have amen, I would say ayla hu dechamira. Maybe the carbon ayla is more stringent. Sheken kol, because the carbon ayla is totally burnt in the mizbeach. Avo shlamim dolei chamiri, eimeloi. Shlamim is not as stringent, so I would say even if the basa became tame, I could still sprinkle the blood. Because of Rachman Shlomim, on the other hand, if the Torah would only say Shlomim, maybe I would say the opposite. Hava min ha'adar abed, to the contrary. The ispu shtei achilas, the carbon Shlomim, there are two achilas, the Mizbeach eats, and the Kayanim eat, and the, and the people, the Kayanim, the Bailam also eat, so maybe that's more stringent. Aval oilo, the lespu shtei achilas, there's no two people, two entities, that is, eating, eim eloi. Maybe I would say that even if the Bosa became Tome, you could still sprinkle the blood. So therefore the Torah has to say this halacha, that if the basa became tummy, you don't sprinkle the blood. It says it twice by the oila and the shlom. So now the Gemara comes back to explain Rabbi Yezah's opinion. What does Rabbi Yezah do with the uh, psukim here? But Rabbi Yezah nami hoksiv v'habasa toichal. Rabbi Yezah says, it says v'dams v'chechli yushopech. So it doesn't matter what happened to the meat. But the Pasuk does clearly say v'habasa toichal. Allah, Rabbi Leezer says, no, when it said Vabas of Taychal, it's coming to teach me something else. Hahu Mibayale, the Taylor was writing that to teach me, She'ain Abasa Mutaba Achila, you're not allowed to eat any of the meat of the Karbanis, Ad Shi'izra Kadam, until the Zrika was done. It's just it's telling me a different Talach about the timing of when you're allowed to eat the Basa, but not regarding the, 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 the Zrika itself, that you can't do the Zrika if there is no Basa. Says the Gemara, Ihachi. Now, if that's the case, if that's what you're learning out from here, so So maybe that's all the pasuk was written for to tell me the order of when you can eat the basar. How does Rabbi Yehuda know to learn out that you that you see from here that you do the zrika of the dam even if the basar became tummy? Afa pisha eishem basar minolan. How do you know that the dam? Again, I skipped one word, sorry. Dam, alpha pisha ain't sham basam in Alan. How do you learn out from here that if you uh, don't have the basa, you can still sprinkle the blood? Allah, so Rabbi Yaz is going to explain to you, you could learn out two things from this pasik. The, the, the pasik should have said it in the opposite order. The reason is because the pasik is switching the order from the beginning. In Cain, if we're only learning out the halacha, Regarding the order of when you eat the basa, that you could only eat it after the zriku was done, so then, Nichtev Rahmana, the Pasik should say, Habasa Taichal. First, it should say that you eat the basa, the Hadar, the Dams, the And then the Pasik should write that you spill the blood. Why should it say it in that order? So it should be similar to the way it says in the Reisha of that Pasik. What does it say in the Reisha of that Pasik? So in the beginning of the Pasik, it says basa first. And then dam. In the end of the pasik, it should have been in the same order. It should have said basa first, and then dam. And Rashi explains, if we would use this order, I would know that you first do the zrika of the dam, and then the basa, even though it's first saying basa, and then dam, because it says, the dam zvachecha yishafech. Yishafech is a past tense, meaning that the dam was already sprinkled from before. So the, there's no reason for the pasik to switch the order from the way it was written in the beginning of the pasik. Why in the end of the Pasik does it switch the order? And it puts Dam Zvachecha first. Shema Mino, it's coming to teach me. Dam Afa Pisha'im Bosa. Letting me know that you can sprinkle the blood even if you have no Bosa. And also, Shema Mino, another thing we learn from here is, She'ein Amos Abosa Mutabachile, you cannot eat the Bosa at Yisra Kadam until you do the Zrika of the blood. So you can learn out both things from this Pasik. Now, everybody agrees that you can't eat the basar of a carbon until you do the zrika. So Rabbi Yezah brought a pasuk for this. Where does Rabbi Yeshua learn this out from? But Rabbi Yeshua, according to Rabbi Yeshua, ain't a basar mutabachila chizer kadam. The fact that you're not allowed to eat the basar until you do the zrika of the blood, from where does he learn this out? Says the Gemari, Rabbi Yeshua holds, you don't even need a pasuk for that. Kal that's learned out from a kal there's, as I mentioned before, there's three parts to the carbon. There's the dam, there's the parts that are brought in the mizbeach, and there's the parts that you eat. So the Gemara is going to make now the kavachayme from the parts that are brought in the mizbeach. Uma emurin, when it comes to those bar- parts that are brought in the mizbeach, so the halach is as follows. Chi lesnuhu, if they were lost, they're gone, they were lost, whatever happened to it, they're not here anymore. Loi that's not going to prevent you from eating. 
you can eat even if that even if the, the parts that were brought in the mizbech are not here. <laughs> but ki isnahu, if those parts that are supposed to be brought in the mizbech are here, ma'akvi, you have to first burn them on the mizbech and then you can eat. If they're gone, then you can eat without it. But if it's here, you first have to bring it on the mizbech. That's the halacha when it comes to that part of the carbon. So now, dam, when it comes to the blood of the carbon, the chi lese ma'akiv, if the blood got lost, if the blood is gone, so then you cannot eat from the carbon. And Rashi says, because it's the blood that's mocked to eat from the carbon. Until you don't bring the blood, there's no kapot of the carbon, and it's kachim that you can't eat of. You eat from it. So the blood, the halach is, even when it's gone, if you don't do the zrike, you can't eat from the carbon. Ki ise, so when the blood is here, and it became uh, Tomei, or you didn't, not that it became Tomei, sorry, you didn't do the Zriki yet, like Kol Shekin. for sure you can't eat from the carbon until you do the Zriki. So Rabbi Shua has a Kav so you don't need any Pasuk for this. Like Kol Shekin the Ma'akir, definitely it'll prevent you from eating from the carbon if you didn't do the Zriki yet. Rabbi Yezer, Rabbi Yezer will tell you why would Rabbi Yezer hold it as Kav So he does, but he says, Milsa the Asi the Kav HaChaymer, Tarech HaKas of Lakra. Many times, even something you can learn from a Kav the Pasuk goes ahead and still writes it. Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua <laughs> says that's true, but Kol Hechedei Wherever it's possible to darshan with uh, a Pasuk, and uh, we're not going to say that the Pasuk is teaching me something that the Kav already said, we darshan that. So therefore Rabbi Yeshua says, I have a Kav I don't need a Pasuk for this. Okay, so this is the conclusion of the discussion explaining Rabbi Yezah's opinion and Rabbi Shua's opinion. But let's recap. What's the machlaikas of Rabbi Yezah and Rabbi Shua? <coughs> if the Basra becomes Tomei, could you still do the Zrika of the Dam and the Mizbeach? Rabbi Yezah says yes, Rabbi Shua says no. And then we had other details the Gemara mentioned before, and the Gemara is going to bring it back now and explain why our Mishnah seems to not go like Rabbi Shua. So now, hashta leima must listen to like Rabbi Shua. Should we say that our mission is like not like Rabbi Shua? Why? The kiv in the Omar ba'inon tarti. Rabbi Yeshua says, in order to bring a carbon, you have to have both things available, which means the dam and the basar. If you can't bring the basar, you can't eat the basar. So then you can't sprinkle the dam. And with sits, as what did we say before? The tzitz achilo is loy meratze. The effect of the tzitz is, is not going to be on the basa that you eat. So if so, heichi asi betome, these carbonis that the Mishnah spoke about, how could they be brought betome? They could only be brought betome as a result of the effect of the tzitz. Because we hold tome t'chuy of the tzitz. So you need the effect of the tzitz. The effect of the tzitz only works for the dam. Not for the basar. And Rabbi Yeshua's opinion is, if you can't eat the basar, you can't sprinkle the dam either. So then how could you bring these karbanis if you don't have the effect of the tzitz on the basar? That's the question of the Gemara. So it seems like our Mishnah is not like, not like Rabbi Shua. So the Gemara here is going to try to say answers. One, two, I think three or four answers the Gemara is going to try to explain that our Mishnah could go according to Rabbi Shua. That's the Gemara. I feel it, tame Rabbi Shua. Our Mishnah could follow Rabbi Shua's opinion. Kasava Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Shua holds... The tzitz will not be effective for the meat that the per- people eat, but it will be effective for the basar that goes onto the mizbeach. And, there, and that's good enough to be able to sprinkle the blood. You don't have to have the, the meat that the people are eating to be uh, kosher, to be tahir, or to, to be uh, affected by the tzitz, to be able to sprinkle the blood. It's enough if the tzitz will affect what goes on the mizbeach. That's good enough. And the tzitz does work for that. Says the Gemara, ha teinach zvachim. Your answer you're giving works regarding the karbonis, the animals, the karbonis that are brought on the mizbeach. The ikke oilen. So regarding the karbonis, you have three components of the carbon by every carbon. The dam, what goes on the mizbeach, and what the person eats. So you could say that the tzitz is effective for two of those components, even if it's not effective for what the person eats. When it comes to the Oymer and Shteya Lechem, there's only two components to Oymer and Shteya Lechem, like every carbon Mincha. What are the two components of a carbon Mincha? What do you do with a carbon Mincha? There's the Kmitze, there's a fistful that you take, that you throw on the Mizbeach, and then there's what you eat. There's nothing else. There's no three components. And the, and the halacha is, regarding the carbon Mincha, the Kmitze is similar to the Zrika of the Dam. That's corresponding to the Zrika of the Dam of a carbon, the, the kmitza is, is that part of the mincha. And then there's what you eat. You do the kmitza and the rest you eat. So there's only kmitza and eating. There's no other part that's brought in the mizbeach. So there's only two components. So oymesh, the leke oilen. There is nothing else that's going on the mizbeach. There's the kmitza, 
which is similar to the zrika of the dam, and then there's, the rest is eaten. So ma'ikla in this case, the tzitz will not be effective for the rest of the carbon that you should be able to eat it. And again, according to Rabbi Shua's opinion, if you can't eat it, so then you can't do the kemitza, just like by a carbon. If there is no basa that could be used, so you can't do the zrika. So if you can't eat it by the carbon oymesh, te'alechem, so you can't do the kemitza. So how could this be brought, betoma? <laughs> And says the Gemara, Omri, so they said, Rabbi Yeshua never said his rule regarding a carbon mincha. Ki Omri Rabbi Yeshua, Nami, the Be'inon party. When did Rabbi Yeshua say that you can't do the zrika of the dam unless the basar is available to eat? Bizvachim. He only said that regarding carbonus of animals. But Menacha is Layomar. When it comes to the carbon mincha, he never says such a thing. By a carbon mincha, you could do the kemitza, even if the rest of it can't be eaten because it's tummy. Like the Gemara, so the Gemara is going to refute this. The Gemara is going to show that this is not true. Rabbi Yeshua didn't say the same thing regarding a carbon mincha. There's a clear Mishnah that says that he did say so regarding a carbon mincha. But now there's a Mishnah that says regarding a carbon mincha, Nitmu Shiareho. If the Shirayim, if what's left after you do the Kmitza, you take that fistful and you throw it in the Mizbeach, the rest that you eat is called Shirayim. So if that becomes Tomei, of the shiareha kemidus rabbi and or or sorry of the shiareh or it didn't become <laughs> tummy it got lost kemidus rabbi yezer according to the opinion of rabbi yezer kshera it's okay the carbon is kosher because rabbi yezer's opinion is that you can do the kemitza without being able to eat it those two things are not dependent on each other kemidus rabbi shua but according to rabbi shua's opinion psula rabbi shua holds that it's possible. Why? Because Rabbi Shua's rule is you have to have dam and basa. They both have to be fit to be eaten and then you could sprinkle the blood. So here the mission is saying the same thing is by the carbon mincha. The only time you could do the kemitza is if the, uh, the shirayim, the rest, could be eaten. So I see that Rabbi Shua's rule is applied for carbon mincha as well. Says the Gemara, that mission wasn't Rabbi Shua himself speaking. Kimidas, that Mishnah is, is, is going according to the opinion of Rabbi Shua, but we like Kimidas, but it's not completely like Rabbi Shua's opinion. Kimidas, Rabbi Shua, it's following in general the opinion of Rabbi Shua that said the Be'in and Tarti, that you have to have both components to be able to be brought as a, that the tzitz affects them. But we like Kimidas, Rabbi Shua, it's not completely like Rabbi Shua. The Ilu Rabbi Shua, Bizvachamama, Rabbi Shua said his rule only regarding Karbonis. And he never said his rule regarding Menachis. So from that mission, we don't have any Raya. So the Gemara is going to refute this here. No, but So this is a conclusion of the answer of the Gemara. And this Tana holds that this rule of Rabbi Shua does apply even to, Karb, to, even to Menachis, that you have to have both the Kemitza and the Shirayim that are fit to be used. Who is this Tana, the Koi Kivosei, that holds the Rabbi Shua, but Umachmet Femine, that's Machmet more than him? In other words, the Gemara doesn't accept this answer. There's someone that holds the Rabbi Shua, and he actually applies what Rabbi Shua said, even to Koi Mincha more than Rabbi Shua himself. Who is this Tana? Besides this, here the Gemara brings a Befeidish Ebraisa where we see that Rabbi Yeshua himself holds his opinion regarding a, a, a Mincha as well. Tani will learn the Braisa. Omer Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yosi said, "Roya ni es divrei Rabbi Yezer. I agree to Rabbi Yezer that you can bring the dam without the basar be menachos u bezvachim. I agree to Rabbi Yezer both by menachos and by zvachim. And the divrei Rabbi Shua, I also agree to Rabbi Shua bezvachim u be menachos both by zvachim and by menachos." The Gemara on the next Ahmed will explain how can he agree to both Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Shua by both of them. Okay, the Gemara will explain that. Now, the, the Braise spells it out. David, Rabbi Yezer, Bizvachim, I agree to Rabbi Yezer regarding the Karbonis, Shahoyo, I mean, Rabbi Yezer said, Dam, Afapishen, Shambasa. You can sprinkle the blood even if the bus is not here. It became Tommy or whatever happened to it. And the Divrei Rabbi Shua Bizvachim, I also agree to Rabbi Shua regarding Karbonis, Shahoyo, I mean, and he said, Im ain't Dam, ain't Basar. If there's no blood, you can't eat the Basar, and Im ain't Basar, ain't Dam. If the Basar is Tommy, you can't sprinkle the blood either. I agree to that as well. <laughs> and Divrei Rabbi Yezer Bim Menachis, I agree to what Rabbi Yezer said by Menachis, Shahoyo, I mean, Rabbi Yezer said, Kaimitz, you could put the Kaimitz on the Mizbeach, even if the rest of the Karbon Mincha is lost. 
And if you have Rabbi Yeshua by Menachis, I also agree to Rabbi Yeshua by Menachis, Shahaya Oymer, Rabbi Yeshua said regarding Menachis, Im ain't kaimitz, ain't shirayim. You don't have the kaimitz anymore, you can't eat the rest of the milcha. Mm-hmm. And the same is the reverse, Im ain't shirayim. If you don't have the shirayim, ain't kaimitz, you can't bring the kaimitz. So I have a clear b'raisa that says that Rabbi Yeshua's opinion, that you have to have both the dam and the basar, applies to a milcha as well. You have to have the kaimitz and the shirayim. And if you don't have the shirayim, you can't bring the kaimitz anymore. So this is going back to our Mishnah. The question now is on our Mishnah, how can you say that the carbon Oymer and Shtei Alechem is brought even betume if the effect of the Tzitz does not have the effect on the Achilles, does not have the effect on the Shirayim? So now the Gemara gives a second answer. Ela says the Gemara, Kasava Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua actually will hold like Rabbi Leyezer. Hatzitz meratze al ha-achilois. The Tzitz does have an effect on the Basar and on the Shirayim of the carbon Mincha. Before we said that it's only Rabbi Yezer that holds this, but we could say that even Rabbi Yeshua holds that it sits has a full effect on the dam, on the Achilles as well. If that's the case, Why did we say before in the Braise? It said before regarding the Karbim Mincha that if the Shirayim became Tomei, so then Rabbi Yeshua says that it's going to be possible. Why is it possible? If he became Tomei, the sits will be effective that it should be Meratzeh. Says the Gemara, a ovod v'sarov. In that b'raise, it brought two examples. It brought an example if it became tame, and it brought an example if it got lost or burnt. So you're right. Regarding if it became tame, the tzitz would be affected. But if it got burnt or lost, regarding that, Rabbi Yeshua says it's going to be. It's going to. It, then, then, then you can't bring the kaimitz anymore. It's only going on that. Says the Gemara, no, that makes no sense. Elo nit molaman. When that b'raise brings the example that the Shirayim became Tomei, according to who was it bringing this example? Laman Katani, according to who was it saying this? Le Rabbi it was saying it according to Rabbi Yezer's opinion. Pshita, that's obvious. Why is it obvious according to Rabbi Yezer? Hash to Yeshloima Ovid Vesorot. Now if Rabbi Yezer says that if the Shirayim of the Mincho all got lost or burnt, the last no, it's totally not here. Machshe Rabbi Yezer, Rabbi Yezer still says that you can bring the Kaimits on the Mizbeach, Nitma, if it became only Tome, the Isai, it's still here, but it's Tome. Miboye, needless to say that you could still bring the Kaimitz on the Mizbeach. It's still here. So it doesn't have to mention the case of Nitma according to Rabbi Yezer. Elo pshitil Rabbi Yeshua. So obviously when it says the case of Nitma, it's saying it according to Rabbi Yeshua, the Ketani Psula. It's saying according to Rabbi Yeshua, whether it got lost, and even if it only became Tomei, it's still possible, and you can't bring the Zerika on the Mizbeach, the, the Kemitah that is on the Mizbeach. So I clearly see that according to Rabbi Yeshua, the Tzitz does not have an effect on the food, on the, on the Eichlin, on the, on the Shirayim that became Tomei. But oh, besides that, there's a clear Braise that says, Tanya, we learned in the Braise, Rabbi Yeshua, Oim, Rabbi Yeshua said, Kol Zvachim Shebeteire, all the Karbaras on the Teire, Bein Shenitma Basar, whether the meat that's eaten, my people became Tome. The Chela Kaim and the fat that goes on the Mizbeach is still good. Or Ubein Shinit Machela, Ubasa Kaim, whether it's a case that the fats became Tome and the meat is still here. Zoyrek is Adam. You could sprinkle the dam on the Mizbeach. If, if one of them is still available, so then you can sprinkle the dam on the Mizbeach. Avo Nitmu Tarvayu, if they both became Tome, so you don't have anything not for the people and not for the Mizbeach to, to use, to eat. So then Loi, you can't sprinkle the blood on the Mizbeach. So Alma, I clearly see Kasava Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua's opinion is The effect of the tzitz is not for the parts that are brought on the Mizbeach and not for the parts of the boss that the person eats. So I see over here that Rabbi Yeshua holds that it does, does not have that effect. So our question remains, if it does not have that effect, how could you bring a carbon sibur betumah? Rabbi Shua's opinion is, if you can't eat it, and if you can't bring it on the Mizbeach, you can't sprinkle the blood either. So we're back to our original question, could our Mishnah be Rabbi Shua or not? So now the Gemara gives a third answer, Elol, Elam, Rabbi Shua. Really, this is Rabbi, Rabbi Shua here, this could go according to Rabbi Shua, our Mishnah could be Rabbi Shua, Veloy Kashia, and there's no question, Kan Lechatchile, Kan Diyevet. The difference is whether it's Lechatchile or Bidiyevet. When Rabbi Yeshua says that the basar has to be available in order to sprinkle the blood, that's only lechatchila. The yevet loy, but the yevet he says it's not a problem, and therefore our mission that said that you can bring the carbon silver betume, it's only the yevet. 
I mean, not Taimra, where do you see this? The Shanele Rabbi Shua ben Lachatchil al Diyavet, that Rabbi Shua has this distinction between Lachatchil and Bidiyavet. It says it in a Braisa. The Tanya says in a Braisa, Nitma, Basar, Ayishanifsal, the Basar became Tome, or it became Pasal, Ayishiyatza, which means also a level of Tome, Ayishiyatza, Chutzle Klayim, it was taken out of the place in the base of Mikdash where it was supposed to be, it became ta- a Pasal, that is, through this. Rabbi Yezayim uh, Rabbi Yezayim says you could still sprinkle the blood. Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Shua says, Lo Yezayim, you cannot sprinkle the blood. Umayde Rabbi Shua, then the Braise says, Rabbi Shua will admit, She'im Zarak, B'diyavet, if you did do this, Rike, Hortza, then the, the, it does take effect. So we see clearly that Rabbi Shua holds that B'diyavet, even if the Basar is Tame, Pasal, you could still sprinkle the blood. So our Mishnah that said that you could bring the carbon Sibor is talking about B'diyavet. So the Gemara asks two questions on this. We're finishing right over here on the top of the Yom. It says the Gemara, Chode, the Psula, the Yevet Mashma. It, before we said that according to Rabbi Yeshua, if the Basar is Tame, it says Pasal. Pasal usually means Bidi So it's very difficult to say that he only meant L'Chadchile. And the Yoid, besides that, even if you're going to say that Psula only means L'Chadchile, and we have a clear Braise that Rabbi Yeshua only said L'Chadchile, so we'll have to say that Psula means L'Chadchile, I have another question. When our Mishnah said that you could bring a carbon sib or even betume, it says boim. Boim means even lechatchila. How could you answer me that, that it could only be brought by the Yavit? Says the Gemara, Elo. So the final answer here is, Loi Kashya. There's no question. I could say that our Mishnah follows Rabbi Shua's opinion. Kan biyachid. When it comes to a carbon yachid, here Rabbi Shua holds lechatchila. The basar has to be available and only then could you sprinkle the blood. And Khan bit Sibur, our Mishnah is talking about a carbon Sibur, and basically the, what the Gemara is concluding right now is that really Rabbi Shua holds Tuma Hutra bit Sibur. And when it comes to a carbon Sibur, you don't need the effect of the tzitz at all. You can bring the carbon, it's totally Hutra bit Sibur. Not like the whole start, beginning of the Gemara where it says that it's only Tchuyah. Our Mishnah holds Hutra bit Sibur.